One. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to my Volta a Catalonia preview. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Chris Hamilton of Teen Sumweb. Chris, how's it going? Good, thanks. And yourself? Very well, thank you. Uh, about to embark on a fairly huge race for yourself. Uh, you know, Catalonia is one of those really big world tour races I'm sure you're well aware of. Uh, looking forward to a week of hard riding? I am. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's uh, I think whatever whatever race it is whatever race uh, I was going to end up doing uh, to be my first race in Europe is always going to be a big one. I mean, well, it's not my first race in Europe, but it's like a first world tour race or first race as a professional in Europe. It's um, I mean, I've done a few races with the team already this year, but I think it's yeah, being uh, racing over here, it's a uh, completely different kettle of fish, I guess you'd say so. But I'm excited, yeah. Uh, how has the transition going? Obviously, we saw you in uh, your home race uh, in the Tour Down Under, and now you're over in Europe, you've had a training camp. How have you settled into to life in the World Tour? Um, it's been really good. Uh, I guess, yeah, I had no idea what it was going to be like. Um, the fact that uh, I was able to be brought into it with the tour down under, uh, that was a really good. That was a really good transition for me. I think because it's uh, I got to stay at home a little bit longer. It's a race I'd already done. It was an environment I knew, and um, so then all all I really had to do was settle. All I really had to worry about was settling into the team and uh, and yeah, doing my job. So, but the the transition's been really good. Um, I'm really I'm happy with uh, with how things have settled in with. Uh, yeah, how my how my new life is panning out, I guess. So things are good. And how is life in Girona? Love it here. Yeah, I've been here for uh, I think almost two weeks now. Um, just in between, uh, yeah, I came back here after uh, Abu Dhabi. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of it's it's been really good just to to have a place where you can have a routine. Um, I mean, it's and just have somewhere where you can you can unpack your bags even though uh, I haven't got a lot of stuff at the moment but it's just it's nice to have somewhere where you can you know where all you know where you're coming back to you know the bed you're coming back to and and um and yeah you can just uh yeah like I said have have a proper training routine and, and yeah um yeah just be just be normal I guess we hear a lot about the the, the good training roads obviously it seems like half the pro peloton stay out in Girona. Uh, how good are those training roads? They're everything they were cracked up to be. Um, you know, it's like you said, people talk about Girona a lot and they say how good the training is and, and how good of an environment it is. And I guess uh, I've ridden in some pretty good places, um, but it's just the, the variety of, the, of terrain you have here is it really is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's. I was I was quite shocked. I mean, um, you can go you can go forty k down the road and you're riding along an amazing coastline, or or just roll straight out of town and you're into like a, a half an hour climb. So it's and and yeah, some of the roads that you you ride on, you just uh, yeah, it's kind of it's um, yeah, it is. It's one of those um, when you're out training, you just look around and it, it really makes you appreciate what your job is. I guess so. It's yeah, it's it's good. Who's your? Have you got some training partners already? Have you hooked up with a, a, a group? Yeah, so I've got um, my housemate Jason Lowndes. Uh He and I, yeah, we went, we grew up at, in the same school together, and he's over here. He's been here. Well, he was here last year already, and this year he's riding for uh, Cycling Academy. So, yeah, I've got him. Um, he's been sort of showing me the ropes and a few of the roads, and obviously I've got Jack Haig here as well, who I also. I've known for a long time. He comes from the same town. We used to race mountain bikes together, and um, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys here that are that are happy to show show you around, and yeah, still got a lot more people to meet though. Yeah. Uh, have you been out looking at any of the the climbs in particular in the race coming up? Have you done any recon? Um, not. I've done uh, a bit parts of the team's time trial course, but the um. The climbs, yeah, they're c kind of uh, just a bit too far away, sort of thing. To um, like, it's yeah, it's it's sort of like a 
you're looking at a maybe 200k day or something like that to see the closest climb so I kind of yeah it didn't really fit into the into my program too well but um yeah we'll just have to just have to wait and see what uh what lies ahead in the race looking at the stages in particular is there any ones that kind of take your fancy obviously there's it looks like a really demanding race this year we've got two big big mountain top finishes that look really hard days in the saddle and then we have a number of days potentially for breaks or punctures any stage that you kind of look at and think yeah i like that one um it's i think uh stage one um i think well depending on how they let that race um it's it it looks like uh, something that could be maybe come down to a small bunch kick in the uh, in the finish. Um, so that's I've I've I that, that's kind of something that takes my interest because I've I've always wanted to see um, how because uh, with positioning and stuff like that it's it's something that. Um, I need to. I do need to work on a lot more, and I want to see what what how competitive I can be uh, with with positioning and placing and stuff like that in a in a reduced bunch. Um, so yeah, a stage like that where it could potentially come down to come down to that that takes my fancy. And then, uh, but stage five, uh, I think that one that one's just going to be uh, that's going to be a brutal day. So I think it's um, yeah, I'm um, I'm excited and. I'm excited for that one, but uh, it'll also be good to have that one done. Yeah. Uh, and what's the weather like just now? Sometimes we've had some really kind of bad editions of Catalonia in terms of the weather. Is it is it nice weather just now? Yeah, it's the weather's been like yeah for the past two weeks. I I think maybe one day I've worn uh, leg warmers, but every other day it's just been Nixon jersey. It's uh, the weather's been yeah, it's unbelievable how good it is actually. Like yeah, just. 23 degrees most 20 to 23 degrees most days and um there's been some days where it's been a bit windy but yeah there's uh I, yeah i've uh, i've heard from people that yeah you always um it, you always get uh the last bit of bad weather for catalonia so hopefully fingers crossed that it stays as it is at the moment but yeah things are things are good for now uh, stage two is uh it's going to be a tough day in the saddle for everybody. We've got a 42 kilometer team time trial. Have you had much practice on your, your new time trial break? Unfortunately, no. Like, uh, time trials are not something like I've done. Uh, I've done one one race on a time trial bike ever. Um, and yeah, I've, yeah, I've ridden a time trial bike a handful, like a handful of times only on the, on the team training camp. So, yeah, time trials are not something uh, I specialize in, um, but um, yeah, it's definitely I, I want to. Yeah, we'll uh, obviously need to work on them a bit more, and um, but for sure, this is uh, this will be for me. This will be starting starting afresh for uh, for time trialing, and I think um, yeah, there's some experienced guys in the groups in, in the team for it, so um, yeah, I think it, it'll be okay, but. 42k is a long is a long way, so we'll see. Uh, the team actually lines up without a clear kind of GC leader. You've you've, you've been riding with guys like Dumoulin and Kelderman in previous races, so you know yeah. looking at the squad, there seems to be maybe a little bit of freedom for for most of the riders in the team. Is is that how it's kind of going to play out? Yeah, that's exactly right. So um, yeah, we don't actually we we haven't really got a uh, a main GC guy uh, like you said. So. Um, it's kind of it's it is it's a bit of a relief uh, for us. Well, I guess it, it's um, it yeah it does give us a lot of uh, a lot of room to move and a lot of uh, a lot of chance to experience um, being involved in the race. So I think um, things like uh, yeah breakaways are, are a possibility. But now that we don't have to worry about um, putting all our eggs in one basket, sort of thing and. It's um it's a bit less pressure and uh and for for myself um it's with the, with the team time trial it's uh it's a bit of a it's a big relief for me that you know we don't have to be uh we don't have to be right at uh sort of um in it to in it to look after someone so and but uh obviously we're all going to still go out and um, 
and race the best we can sort of thing. But, yeah, there's uh, the GC is not a focus for us. It's, it's more stage results, yeah. Yeah, and a, a good, I would imagine a good race to come uh, with kind of no pressure because there are a number of days where breakaway could go away. As you mentioned, we've got the, the big time trial where people are going to lose time. Then we've got stage three straight after it, which has got three cap one climbs inside about 50k at the end. So there's going to be big gaps and it looks like a good week for potential breakaway riders. Uh, that's happened in the past here in Catalonia, so uh, it looks good for you guys, hopefully. Now, we have done some stars uh, to look at the GC riders uh, and we have the following. So in at one star, you have uh, TJ Van Garderen, you've got George Bennett and you've got Lachlan Morton. Uh, some interesting choices in there. Talk, talk me through some of them. So for my one stars, I guess I kind of um, they're not. It's a little bit different. Um, they're obviously uh, do have GC potential, but they're sort of the three riders that I'm yeah quite keen to see where they're at and sort of thing. Um, uh, for starters, yeah, Lachlan Morton, um, being a fellow Australian, you know he's been uh, in the World Tour before. Um, and yeah, he kind of, uh, took a bit of a step back, uh, but, um, racing, racing the Jelly Belly in America and it's good to see him back on top and, um, and yeah, there's, it, he's obviously a guy with huge potential. So I'm just excited to see, um, to see him back and see what he's going to be, what he's going to be like for his first race back in Europe. So, um, uh, and George Bennett, um, he yeah, had a good ride at Abu Dhabi, uh, so yeah, he's he's been on, been on a long break after um, after the Vuelta. I think he yeah he had uh, got chronic fatigue after that, and then to come back and and have the ride that he did at uh, Abu Dhabi was quite impressive. And uh, yeah, and Van Garderen, well, he obviously didn't have the didn't look like he had the best race in Abu Dhabi. So it will be yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what he's going to be. How he's bounced back from that, and, and yeah, what what to see what we can uh, what comes out of him. Yeah, we've got some recent races to look at, kind of form as well. We a lot of these guys have done Abu Dhabi or maybe Terreno. Uh, Terreno wise, I've got Geraint Thomas in at one star. Uh, I have Ilno Zakir in and at one star, and I've got Jakob Fuglsang. Fuglsang really strong in Pan, and he's Thomas obviously ridiculously strong in Terreno. Could potentially have won it if it wasn't for exploding wheels in the team time trial. Uh, mm. So, I mean, Team Sky are going to be really strong. It just depends on how the race pans out, I presume, for, for Froome. Uh, and at two stars, we, we do have some kind of similar riders in here. We both have uh, Adam Yates and Dan Martin. Uh, and you've got Zachary and Yates was going really well in Terreno, really unlucky to have to pull out through injury. Zachary, you saw a bit of in Abu Dhabi? Yep. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that's one of the main reasons I've put him down because yeah, we've uh, you've seen he's obviously travelling all right and he's always uh, quite an exciting rider to watch. So yeah, and Dan Martin, uh, another guy who stays fairly close by, knows this race well, has done well here in the past. Uh, he's an impressive rider, isn't he? He is, yeah, and uh, yes, yeah, just uh, yeah, judging by the results that uh, that he's had in the past, it's yeah, I. Uh, that's my main reasoning for um, for putting him on here, and yeah, he is obviously quite a good rider to watch. So, uh, obviously, he'll benefit from hiding away in the quick step team time trial lineup. Uh, something he used to actually hate uh, individual time trials, but now that he's riding the quick step, he seems to be liking the team time trial event. Uh, three stars, no surprises. I think you, we've got Froome, we've got Contador from yourself, and you've also got Valverde. Uh, yeah. Talk a bit about some of these guys. Um, well, for him, it's uh, you can't. It, it's it's hard to it's hard to have a guy like that and not give him uh, one, <laughs> not not have uh, one of the best chances of this race. I mean, he's not. I don't. I don't believe he's podiumed here before on the overall GC. But um, yeah, maybe. Uh, may, I think maybe he may be having a uh, a different sort of run into the year as what he has previously. Um, obviously, we saw him in Australia, but. Uh, yeah, not it's. Uh, it was hard to gauge gauge his form on on that sort of race on the race at Herald Sun Tour. So I think um, yeah, it'd be quite interesting to see how he is. And Contador, well, we didn't get to see him. Uh, I don't. Yeah, we didn't really get to see him quite at his best um, at Abu Dhabi. 
Uh, it's I think just, kind of just wanted to follow Quintana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of tactics got in the way a bit there. So um, yeah, he's got a few cards to play. And Valverde's um, yeah, he's just a, he's a he's a rider I really admire. Um, so um, yeah, he's he's one person that I'm really excited to be lining up against. Uh, I've got Contador in at two stars. Uh, I think the main reason for that would be I, I'm looking at Trek and I think they're going to lose some time in the team time trial compared to some of the bigger bigger teams. They do have some good TT riders in there, but it's going to be hard for Contador. He did look good in Paninis, but I think he really tried an awful lot in Paninis and could be a little tired. Froome, I'm glad you mentioned his record here. It's not the best. He's never, I think, finished even in the top five. Seems to be a period of time where he sometimes catches a bit of illness, but clearly one of the star riders here. Valverde, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely in awe of that man. He's just one of the best I think there's ever been. And I've actually put Van Gardening up there in three stars. I think BMC could take a big lead in that team time trial compared to some of the other riders. He wasn't great in Torino. He wasn't great in Abu Dhabi. Potentially, he's been saving his legs for this race. We won't know until he's actually here. He's been good here in the past, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So, if you had to name one rider who who's going to go on and win the whole thing, I'm going to go with Valverde. Well, that leaves me to take through. So yep. I'll, I'll disregard everything we've said about him not doing well here in the past. Uh, yep. And I'll take Chris well, you never know. This, this could be the one. So yep. it could be the one, and he's got Thomas and he's got Landa. Uh, Valverde's sure to light things up. Movie star always do a good team time trial on home soil. So, uh, looking forward to a good, good race. And yourself, what would be a, a successful race for you? Oh, I mean, it's it's really it's quite hard to uh, for me to gauge uh, where I'm going to be at um, in in this kind of in this depth of competition. Uh, I think to be. To be realistic, um, you know, GC is not really a focus, but uh, yeah, to be yeah, maybe looking at top thirties or something like that. I think um, after where I can gauge myself from maybe Derby, yeah, maybe improve on that. But there's a few things I need to work on from there. But um, uh, I'm just going into this race with uh, open eyes and ears, and yeah, I've got a lot. To, I've got a lot to learn, and um, I'm quite aware of that. There's a lot of things that. Yeah, a lot of steps I need to take to uh, to become a competitive rider. So yeah, we'll just uh, we'll see what the week. Anything anything that comes out of the week will be a good thing. So. And what's up next for yourself after Catalonia? Do you know your plans for the next kind of month or so? Uh, yeah. So after, well, yeah, after Catalonia, it'll be uh, Pay Vasco. I think like uh, like most riders will be. Um, and then uh, one tour I am quite excited for in April is uh, is Yorkshire. So that's um, yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about the race, and I've never never been up to the UK. So that's yeah, that's that's one race that's in uh, in the horizon for me that I'm quite excited about. Yeah, it really kind of suits your characteristics. I would say short, punchy, uh, mm. hard days on the bike, lots of elevation, but you know nothing that you. You haven't kind of grown up with in Australia, I would imagine, quite yeah. similar to racing back home. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's um, that's what I'm basing my uh, my thoughts on, sort of. So yeah, that's that's what I'm expecting, and yeah, it's hopefully, uh, hopefully, it's suitable. You'll need to bring your leg warmers and your arm warmers and your rain jacket. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe a bit different to the Spanish climate, so um, that could be a bit of a shock, but we'll see. <laughs> right, well, Chris, thank you very much for taking your time out to come on today. Uh, best of luck this week ahead. It's going to be a tough race uh, and a, a, a good learning experience for yourself, no doubt. Uh, but thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem.